Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2013 with an awesome company called uh, Lego. And what do you guys do? Ah, oh, we build robot, we make robot kits for kids. I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course, we all know the plastic bricks. We know them, we love them. Uh, I have not played with any of the computerized stuff, the Mindstorm stuff, since the very first product. So, uh, the big yellow brick that you could like drag and drop different pieces of code, um, I guess it was like 03 or something. But uh, what has changed in the last 10 years with Mindstorm? A lot has changed, actually. It's our third generation. We're in our 15th year. So what you had, the RCX platform, is still an autonomous robotics platform for kids. And now we're on our third generation. So what's changed is lots of things, as you can imagine. Uh, lots more sensors, more inputs, more outputs, more memory in the brick. Uh, we have a toy version for use at home. We have an education version for use, of kids, for, uh, use at schools to teach science and technology. And so what is the process like for somebody that's completely new to this uh, to get started with the platform? Is it, is it like, oh, programming, that, you know, I'm seven. I just want to play with Lego, but I really like Technics and I've already figured out gears. So now I want to take it to the next step. Oh, what's the barrier to entry? Uh, the barrier to entry is obviously the kit, which comes with the software, but you need a computer to program on. You can also do some basic programming on the brick up to 12 steps. Uh, the programming is really, really easy. It's all drag and drop icons into a line. So it's super simple to use. Very similar to what you described before, only it's much more intuitive now. So the idea being like, if I want to do an if statement, I grab a little green if and I drag it in there, and then I'm like, oh, if what? And then grab something else and say, yeah. well, if the sensor sees this, so, and then I grab a then, and things like that. Yes. Okay, well what if I'm a programmer and I know what I'm doing with like C++ and Java and things like that. What do you have for like the hardcore enthusiasts? So the brick is now, the, the operating system is Linux now. So Are you kidding for real? No way. When did that happen? Just with this generation. It happened this morning. It just happened. <laughs> what, what was the, uh, the thought process behind bringing it from like a little tiny microcontroller that it was before to a complete Linux platform? Uh, we just wanted to make sure that it appealed to all kinds of people. So it had to be super easy to use for kids, but it also needed to be really expandable for adults and fans like you. Sounds super hackable. What is the device itself? How many inputs and outputs and what are the kind of... Inputs, four outputs. It has an ARM9 processor and um, 64 megabytes of RAM, but it also has expandable memory with USB and SD. Uh, what about connectivity? Bluetooth, Wi-Fi? Bluetooth and USB. Do you know anything about the chipsets of the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? Some, probably not for you. Okay. Well, I guess that's just for the hackers to, to open it up and, and check it out. Get all that information online. It's all posted. Uh, so, in addition to launching the hardware today, do you have kind of uh, any other things to kind of do the the, the full experience, if you will? Uh, for those that are new coming into this? Sure, so for schools we have a 30 hour STEM curriculum. So teachers can take this and implement science and technology, engineering and math curriculum in their school. And we also have a software that science teachers can use with really um, innovative and new and cool data logging. You can data log right on the brick. You can program on the brick and upload it into the software so you can get started really quickly. Um, on For the toy division, um, there are lots of really cool new robots for kids to use at home right out of the box. All right. So what I'm really excited about, just, you know, hacker brain is going a million miles an hour right now thinking like, dude, robots and Wi-Fi and swarming. Are there like APIs and are there easy ways to like drag and drop things to like create a collective of robots that understand each other? There are. There are probably better people who could explain that to you than I could, but, but I know that that's possible. This is super wicked. What's the price point? What's the availability on the EV3? Sure. So we're pre-selling now. It'll ship in the fall. And the price point for home use is three fifty. You can outfit a classroom for under five grand. Okay. And, and lastly, um, space, castle, or town? Castle. Way to go. All right. Well, for continued coverage of all things CES 2013, head over to revision3.com. <laughs> NPR has a great public radio app that is compatible with Ford Sync AppLink. This means that when you're in your car and you're on the go and you don't want to touch your phone, you don't have to. You have all your favorite playlists, all your favorite NPR shows right on your phone, ready for voice commands. Hourly News. I'm Louise Schiavone. House Republican leaders are challenging So the if you want to listen to your favorite shows like Morning Edition and All Things Considered, you just have them right there in your new Ford car. 
Thank you again to Ford for sponsoring this Hack 5 CES special.